All right, guys, uh, just home from work. Thought I'd take a crack at Wendell's second challenge lock. This is a Ruswin that PKS looks to be hand stamped at some point, probably some owner's marking. As long as this is, we're probably looking at a six pinner. And he calls this Gage's Rage. And here's the key. So it doesn't look like too challenging on the bidding. What I, I did try this earlier, it doesn't like to turn counterclockwise. If you jiggle it, it will eventually, but it does turn clockwise pretty easily almost every time. But going counterclockwise, oh, there we go. It does work, so I'm thinking it's got some kind of T-pin inside of there that's just not quite right. But the key does work, therefore it is going to be pickable. So let's go ahead and get the clock over here. See if we can't get this picked real quick today. I am guessing... Uh, because um, Wendell built the first one, we called that Junkyard Dog. Kind of rough looking pins. This one probably is very similar, hence that reluctance to turn counterclockwise. But I'm not going to worry about that. Um, it does turn. Um, I'm going to use top of the keyway, I think. Yep. And in looking, you can't quite see it. I'm looking at a slightly different angle, but pretty wide open keyway. There's one piece of warding down here at the bottom. But other than that, we get to use the full length of that and we get to use a wide pick. So if I pick from, say, this ledge, I can kind of go at a, just a very slight angle. And with 25,000 pick like this to forest, uh, I should be able to reach up there with no problem. I hope. I hope. All right, let's see what this thing's got. Gage's Rage. All right, I'm going to slide that all the way in. Light tension. And see what Wendell has in here for us. Looking for a binder. And the first time through, I got nothing. Something's got to be. There it is. Number. Look, first of all. I'm only counting five here. It's long enough to contain six. And if I look at this. One, two, three, four. Five. Yeah, maybe it is only five. All right, here we go. All the way in, light tension. If I can get that tension wrench to settle in there. There we go. All right, I'm on the last pin. Maybe. There we go. I got to click on him. That was four. I got a very light click on two and just a slightest turn on the core there. I can tell you for sure there are some serrations in here, but we know that Wendell is a tap addict. And I'm again on five, a little bit of counter rotation there. <clears throat> That's two clicks. That might have been one too many. I'm going to move down. There we go. That was three. Very slight turn on the core. Super light tension. I'm getting ready to drop that tension wrench. It's so light. But with threads, that's what you got to do. I'm on one. I'm getting slight counter rotation. <clears throat> I just got a click, but I think we're still getting a little counter rotation there. Very slight. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, very deep. I thought we had it. Very deep. Fault set. That deep of a fault set, you think there's probably a T-pin in there. and That might be the one that's not allowing it to go counterclockwise. Might be hard to find him too, if he's a deep cutter. Well, oh, about to lose the tension wrench there. Readjust him. There we go.
Looking for any kind of counter rotation. I got nothing here. Trying to find what I believe is probably a T pin up near the very top. I'm on the last pin. He's right at the bottom. So I get under him. There we go. Get a little counter rotation. Get under there. And there we go. All right, so we got some spools, we got some serrations, and I'm still sticking with the T-pin story. I still believe we got at least one of those hanging things up. Let's get this out of the way. Uh, oh boy. Hmm. I am. I'm going to say I'm lost here. I have no idea how to get that off of there. I'm going to take that screw out, but I'm not sure that's the. I'm not sure that's the answer. It doesn't look like it's been beat on there or peened on there. I have no clue here. Let me try to pry him first. Yeah, that's not working too good. All right, let me take that screw out and see if there's anything under there. And he just spins pretty much freely. Oh, wait a minute. I don't see how that would be possible. I'm going to go ahead and keep loosening him. Maybe the front of this lock comes off. I notice there's a, a gap there. No, it's just spinning freely. And that is not coming off of there, I don't think. Nope. That really does look welded on there, my god. All right, I really don't know what to do here. I don't want to break it, as old as this lock is. All right, maybe if we turn the key to a certain angle, maybe there's something under there, nope. The weird part is that this is moving back and forth while the front of the lock is not. Almost like it's a separate piece. And I'm wondering if maybe we take that. Does that screw off of there? Nope. Does that screw come out? Nope. Now let's see if that screw engages. It feels like it ought to just fall out of there. Nothing. The tailpiece is waggling just a little bit and the front of the lock is not. No idea, guys. Let me take a break. Maybe I'll just cut the back of this off. We are getting into this lock. All right, I got a feeling this is one of those kind of challenges. These rods were obviously peened on there, and now I ground off the entire tailpiece and then the tips of those rods, and now they come out. And a little piece of brass then popped off, exposing these two screws. Let me see if I can get that guy out of there. And that's the actual tailpiece we were looking for. So I don't know how Wendell put that on there or why. But hopefully from this point it'll be fairly normal other than 10 minutes with a grinder. And of course this whole lock will never be the same. All right, there's that tailpiece. There's the standard core we're looking for. All right, where'd the key go? All 
All right, when they've obviously been in here because we got plenty of threads. Homemade spool, homemade spool. Number three, homemade spool. Number four, homemade, homemade serrated. Number five, there were six pins in here. Homemade spool, two grooves in it, and then another homemade spool. Looks like, again, plentiful threading in there. And what do we got upstairs? All right, looks like a spool. He's pressing very firmly against the follower. Let's see if I can do this through the camera lens. Homemade spool, very sharp edge. Another one. He's just barely hanging in there. The second one. And I don't even see a spring on him. Number three, homemade serrated. Four, no square pins in this one. Homemade spool. Five, double spool. And the last one. There is one there, but I don't think he has a spring in him. He's just barely hanging in there. Let's cover everything else up with a tweezer and then just see if we can dump out. Yeah, and the last one, we had no spring and then we had a serrated spool. It's uh, reduced diameter. All the rest of these are standard diameter and that's the only one that had, it, it's an American actually. So it's about three quarters of the normal diameter just designed to flop around in there. All right, there we go. A lot of these are handmade, very nicely done, better than the other ones. So we got some, we got some spools, uh, spools slash serrated. All the key pins have been modified one way or another, and none of the uppers, none of the drivers were uh, standard either. This one, uh, no spring on this guy. The rest of these had uh, pretty much standard springs. I dumped them out in the tray on this side, but they're all pretty much the same as that one. Anyway, there you go. Uh, Wendell's Gages Rage. Everybody else, <laughs> thanks for your patience. Sorry about having to do a hack job, but when someone sends something like this, that's just what you got to do. Anyway, Wendell, thanks a lot, and uh, hold on to the rest of them. Wait for version 5 before you send me the next one. Thanks, guys.